I'm a firm believer that, you know, as a human race, we've been around for two and a half million years on this planet. And evolutionary speaking, our bodies are designed to eat, to digest, and to absorb foods a certain way. And if we look at the paleo diet, okay, this is the slide traveling back in time, you can see the, the circle for primitive men, right? Which basically means 99% of our food intake from carbohydrates was from vegetables, fruits, and legumes, and nuts. Okay, so there was no starches, there was no sugars, there was no white bread, pasta, cereals, cookies, bagels, Krispy Kreme, there was none of that. There was no skim milk, right? There was no fat-free cream. There was none of those things. Modern man, right, if you look over to the right, we're right now eating about 59% refined grains. So white rice, white pasta, white bread, so on and so forth, right? Even the whole wheat grains are really not true whole wheat anymore through the processing methods. We're eating a lot of sugar sweeteners and even artificial sweeteners today, which the jury is still out on how healthy those are, and that's another talk. And, um, and then about 23% vegetables, fruits, legumes, and nuts. All right. So this is just the carbohydrate intake, but massive difference from pretty much two and a half million years. The new diet has been around for maybe 200. Even if we just say 10,000 years, this is how long we've been eating grains as humans since about 10,000 years. If we compare that to two and a half million years, that's what 99.8% of a hunter-gatherer diet, as some of us call it, or a Paleolithic diet and then maybe 0.2% of this more modern Western diet that truly is the culprit of most chronic diseases as we, as we have them today. The hunter-gatherer diets in some, in some tribes were up to 80% fat. Some of the Eskimo tribes literally ate up to 80% fat. And this is whale fat, whale blubber, all right? So this is saturated fat. And there was no recorded heart disease or any degenerative disease until white man showed up and brought them flour and alcohol. Um, there was, in the traditional diet, no processed foods whatsoever, right? Because we hunt, we gather. There's no sugar, there's limited carbohydrates. Here's the important part, and I want to make this point early, we're going to go into it more in detail. And there was a very good balance between omega-6 and omega-3s within the fats. And we're going to go more in detail what that means, but there was a balance within the fats that they ate. Okay, they didn't just eat one type of fat. So there was a variety and a balance as nature intends. Right? I, always have the idea, I always have the concept that nature knows better than man. Right? We're just not smart. We're smart, but we're not that smart. And we're not smart enough to replicate nature. So when, I'm, when I look at diet, when I look at the body, when I look at healing, you know, then my concept is, okay, well, let's do what we've done for a long time. Let's eat foods the way nature provides it, and miracles happen. In 1804, William Banting published the letter on corpulence. William Banting was about 5'5", five five, and he was 200 pounds, and he was desperately trying to find a way how he could lose weight. So he came up with the concept of, you know, I'm just going to stop eating sugars and bread rolls and things like that. He just stopped eating carbohydrates. and. Um, his doctor, Dr. William Harvey, basically who pres prescribed this diet along with him because it was fairly a new concept, um, recorded all the results. Well, William Banton grew to be 85, or 80, 80, in his 80s, 84 years old. He lost 46 pounds, held it off without ever any problems, without having to calculate his meals, starving himself, exercising an hour a day, any of those things. He simply just dropped the sugars. And uh, so he had an unlimited consumption of meat. He ate no potatoes, bread, or sugar. And this was heavily documented. It was actually published and sold throughout Europe and became a big hit. So a lot of physicians took this diet on for weight loss and, and literally helped um, obese or overweight patients by the thousands by utilizing the uh, lead or corpulence diet. Now, in 1892, there was Dr. Emmett Densmore study, How Nature Cures, and he came up with The Natural Food of Man, and um, a statement of the principal arguments against the use of bread, cereals, pulses, potatoes, and all other starch foods. And I quote, an obese person may be given a diet of meat excluding bread and potatoes, and the patient will reduce to his normal weight. 
So the concept is here is that the body will auto-regulate if it's fed the right type of foods. There's no calorie counting and there's no exercise and there's no energy in versus energy out model that we're all praising so today with weight loss. It's simply the fact of giving the body the right food and the body will auto-regulate and gain or lose weight however it needs to. I quote, as soon as the patient returns to his diet of bread and potatoes, he straight away begins to increase in weight. All right. So this is 1892. So again, none of this, this, this whole, you know, that, you know, eating fat could actually be healthy. This is nothing new. All right. The New, the new England Journal of Medicine. This is one of my, my favorites. This is from 1953 from the Symposium on Obesity. First course of each meal, one half pound or more of fresh meat with the fat. This, is, this part of the diet is unlimited. You can eat as much as you want. Here's the kicker. Most of the meat you buy is not fat enough, so get extra beef kidney fat. <laughs> okay? I'm in. Good meats are roast beef, steak, roast lamb or mutton lamb or mutton chops, boiled beef or boiled breast of lamb, fresh pork and pork chops. All right. So again, if we listen to this with today's idea of health and overall fat, we're just like, whoa, wait a minute. Right. So that's totally a contrary to what we're used to. But my point is that until Ansel Keys came along and got all the support for his fat hypothesis with, with, with cardiovascular disease, there was a fair amount of research and scientists actually prescribing low carbohydrate diets with good results. So the proof's in the pudding. Dietary fat and coronary heart disease. Summary of evidence from prospective cohort and randomized controlled trials. This is a study by Walter Millett, MD. He's the chair and Department of Nutrition at Harvard School of Public Health. This data was collected on nearly 300,000 individuals. I quote, intake of total fat and saturated fat, which is animal fat, was not significantly associated with coronary events, which are heart attacks or mortality. Fatal heart disease was not reduced by low fat diets or by replacing saturated fats with polyunsaturated fats, which are vegetables. So again, there is a lot of, there's an, I don't know, Harvard Medical School, Chair of, of Nutrition. I mean, again, so these are people that, you know, are not just your MD somewhere in, you know, this is, these are people that, in, in the forefront in, in our sci within science today and the medical community, but so the voices are there and they're growing more and more. Um, but again, there's really not a lot of research that backs up the whole hypothesis of fat and heart disease and obesity.